the moment of truth, hopefully all dice are intact. Welcome back to my channel. Today we make no benchmarks, no x86 stuff, no games. Instead, we will have a closer look at this monster CPU made by IBM in the 80s. This is a thermal conduction module type 3090 out of an old IBM mainframe. I showed already once on my channel a similar TCM from the 90s. Yeah, inside this one we have a huge ceramic substrate uh, with several dyes on it, as well as a very complex engineered cooling case. And exactly this module we will disassemble today and dig into the fascinating world of technology from the 80s and monster ceramic packages. Before we take this monster apart, let's have a closer look at it and some technical details. Yeah, this whole assembly has a weight of about 1.6 kilograms, so this is really an insane heavy CPU at the end. We can see here the ceramic substrate with an insane amount of 1800 golden pins for its electrical connection to the PCB. On the side here an IBM sticker which is almost not readable anymore, but still we can see here a manufacturing date of December 1987. In the web I found this nice schematic of this module, where we can already see what we can expect to see after disassembling. We have this heavy metal housing which includes spring-loaded pistons for heat dissipation of each chip. We can also read here helium reservoir. So the space between the pistons and the chips is filled with helium, cause it has a better temperature conductivity than air. In later models they used oil instead of. I found also a nice IEEE paper from IBM, where they are mentioning here in the table the 3090 TCM module. So let's have a closer look at the specification here. We get here a size of 110 to 117 millimeters. So I think there is meant the ceramic substrate with 36 to 45 layers. So the ceramic substrate contains up to 45 different layers um, to get the whole thing working with a V account of 470,000. So 470k VR connections between here these different ceramic layers, which leads at the end to the pins. So incredible technology for the mid of the 80s. So what else can we see here? Wiring. 180 meters of internal wiring in the ceramic substrate, available C4 connections, 24,000. So the C4 connections are the pads, let's say, on the top side where all the dies or the chips are connected to. So chip sides 132, so this module can get populated up to 132 different uh, bipolar chips on the top side, depends on the configuration. So, IO pin connections 1800, I mentioned already, and cooling capacity 520 watts, water cooled. So, this thing has a TDP of a half of a kilowatt. So, it's also insane if we consider this thing is from the mid of the 80s. I also found this nice document from IBM where all the details are nicely described of the 3090 system. I will not dig here into much technical details, but I will put the download link below for you to go through this PDF if you want. Here we can see the size of such a 3090 mainframe. This is really serious stuff which filled a whole room back in the 80s. TCMs are mounted on a specially developed 22-layer circuit board. The multi-layer design incorporated over 1,500 meters of wires needed to provide a large number of interconnections that make up the processor complex. Also interesting here to see, the central processor board is located above the vector facility board. Nine thermal conduction modules make up each IBM 3090 vector facility board. Three TCMs are required for each facility and three facilities are accommodated on each TCM board. You can also see here the tubes of the water cooling. So really insane. So this is a very interesting document with a lot of content. Here an engineer who is holding this module in his hand for maintaining or so. Yeah, and here we can see one of the bipolar chips which is mounted on the substrate. Those are called also fast bipolar, fast bipolar emitter coupled logic. 
And here also a nice drawing which shows the bipolar chips, which are on the ceramic module, which is then assembled in a TCM, where several of those get mounted into a board. So really, really insane stuff. Then let's go ahead with disassembling. On the top we can see here these 20 screws which are holding the spring-loaded housing together. We know from the pictures and the schematics that on each die is a piston pressed by a spring. To avoid any damages on a die we need to lift the top part equally. First I will remove a screw on each side to put it back on the other side to use them as a stand for protecting the pins. Then I'm going to remove the rest of the screws except one on each side to remove them at the end equally. This technique worked out on many other TCMs I dissembled already so far. So, most of the screws are removed, which felt like removing the screws of a cylinder head in a car engine. When I remove the remaining four screws, the top part might slip to the side and this could also damage a die. And due to the fact that we have just on the back side uh, the threads, I will put here another four screws fully inside to give the top part a proper guidance to lift straight. We can see now the gap between the two parts and the housing are separated. To avoid that any piston might fall onto a die, I will turn this TCM now over. 
So. And yeah. Let's hope the best and let's remove this. First of all, we can remove here the lower frame and the TCM or the, the ceramic module is just lying now on the pistons. So the moment of truth, this is always something very exciting to me. Wow, look at that. This looks insane, so nice, so beautiful. So here we have another frame, which was in between. This we can remove and look at that. How cool is that? Here we have this pretty nice ceramic module. And look at that, this insane engineering. If I would just show you something like that, would you ever believe this is a part of a CPU? For sure not. This is very, very accurate machined. And yeah, those pistons and the holes, it's, it's crazy. This fits absolutely perfect. A great piece of mechanical work we can hold here in our hands. You can imagine how much hours of engineering IBM spent to develop such a sophisticating cooling concept. Very, very nice. And here the MCM or multi-chip module. We can see it is populated with 113 bipolar chips. This looks so nice. Isn't it a piece of art? Mainframe stuff from the 80s is just too cool. Yeah, at these unpopulated areas here, we can see those C4 connections for the die. They are so small that you almost cannot see them with the naked eye. This small black thing here uh, is a temperature sensor, which was monitoring the temperature inside the DCM module. Oh, I love this piece. This is so nice. Those MCMs or the whole TCM, they are very, very collectible, by the way. Most of them are damaged because unqualified people were dissembling them. And for intact ones, you have to pay several hundreds US dollar on eBay if you can find one. They are very, very nice to display and yeah, it's, they are just white beauties and they are reflecting an insane technology from the 80s while we were playing Tetris on an 8088 machine. And now let's put it to a place where it deserves to be a VIP place in the collection. I hope you liked this interesting teardown to get a closer look on this beautiful piece of art in white ceramic from the 80s. If so, please thumbs up and leave me some comments below. You can also subscribe to the channel that you won't miss any further content. By the way, you can find CPU Galaxy also on Twitter. I'm posting there frequently also interesting stuff you might not see here on the channel in a video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.